Hey everybody, welcome to this class. I'm so excited to be teaching at SAU again. I've got to teach this class uh, one year ago and we really had a fun time doing it. Now this time with the class being online, um, you know, it's kind of a little bit on the students to really push yourself and motivate yourself um, to get the work done and to want to be creative and to want to make films. My hope and goal is always to inspire students to do their best work. And obviously, if you're taking this class, you are interested in making film. Um, it can be the most satisfying and rewarding uh, endeavor that you do. Um, it can also take up a lot of time, especially if you really enjoy doing it. Um, so I'm not going to overburden you with, with doing too many productions. I would like one really good production. Um, per student and then a few small ones kind of going into it. But really, again, with it being an online course, an asynchronous on, online course, um, it's gonna be really up to you to be motivated to wanna do this, to make sure um, you're watching the lectures, to make sure you're doing the assignments, um, and to make sure you're having fun. And I think the best way that you can ensure that you're truly enjoying this class and getting the most out of it is being um, up to date and and current with the assignments, not falling behind, making sure you understand the instructions, etc. Um, so just a little bit about me. Um, I'm Matthew Foss. I get to be your, your fun online teacher and I've been doing film since I was 18 years old. Um, I lived out in Texas and did the film scene there. I lived out in Hollywood and you know did the film scene um, there. Um, but I found that you can really be anywhere. You can be in Magnolia, Arkansas and be a part of the film scene. Film is everywhere. It's especially in digital cinema, which this class is. Um, digital's really opened the door so that anybody can make film. And um, I'm really excited I, uh, to teach. I love teaching. I love seeing the creative work that students come up with. It is to me just as fun as being on a film set. So just really briefly, I'd like to go over the syllabus with you um, and let you see what you can expect um, you know, for this course. Okay, so we're here in Blackboard and you'll see under course syllabus, I have the course syllabus. Um, if you want to just take time to really look it um, over, um, I'll go over a few things here with you. Sorry, it's not full screen. That didn't make any difference. Um, but you can kind of look this over in more detail if you'd like. Um, one thing I want to um, point out is this is the best email to get a hold of me with right here, mgtfoss at gmail.com. Um, I have so many emails right now, but that's one that I check um, and I have open throughout the day. Um, if you need to get a hold of me for any reason, um, that's a good way to get a hold of me if you want to schedule a, um, an online meeting um, or something like that, then, then that's where you can um, definitely get me uh, at. Um, so, Again, you could kind of look this over, um, sort of boilerplate stuff that you've probably been hearing already, you know, throughout the semester in your other classes. Um, goals, plans, course content, etc. cetera. Um, and right down here, these this is kind of where I really want to draw your attention. Um, so the things that you'll need, hopefully you have this already, the bare bones camera course. Um, second edition. It's a very easy read. It is so easy, um, but it, 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 it sometimes film books can get really dry. They can get really boring. They can just they, they're going to put you to sleep. Um, this one keeps it nice, easy. Um, it, you'll you'll really enjoy it because it puts things down in just the very basics. Um, so one other thing is that I may ask you to stream some videos um, online. Um, one, just so that we're all watching the first um, kind of series of, of 
content and that we're all kind of working from the same place. If there is a reason you cannot get it, if there's a financial hardship, something like that, don't be afraid to come to me and say, hey, I don't, um, I can't get this movie, but I have a Netflix account, is there? And then uh, we can come up with one um, that, that will work for the material and that um, you'll understand what's going on. But if there's any reason, whatever it is, um, that you can't stream the one that I'm asking, just, um, you know, send me an email and we'll work something out. Um, now, with this class, you will obviously be, be filming on your own. Um, well, not even necessarily on your own, but you'll be filming. Um, you can use your smartphone um, if you want. Smart, And we'll kind of go over a little bit of when we get into the camera, how to get the best image out of your smartphone, if that's what you have to use. Um, last semester when I taught this, there were quite a number of students who had their own DSLR camera or video camera of some kind. Um, and these are nice because you can control the exposure settings um, so you can give it a more cinematic look. Um, but really, we're not out to win any Academy Awards. I want you to have fun and I want it to look as good as it possibly can be. Um, but it's right now it's learning the principles. When it comes down um, to projects, the, the, especially the big projects, if you want to team up with somebody, like if there's somebody in class that you know and you know they have a camera and um, you want to team up and work on a project together, that's fine. That always comes with its own issues of one person doing more work than another. Um, but if uh, I have had students who work together, um, I, I will extend the length maybe of what your film is. But um, you know, for doing doing some of these projects, if you want to team up, that's that's perfectly okay as well. Um, also, to check out cameras from the school, they do have um, they have some uh, pretty nice ones. I believe they have. Um, a couple GH4s or GH5s, um, so they will get you a really good looking uh, image. Um, you can uh, contact uh, Professor Coppersmith, here's his email address, and you can work out a time that's um, best for everybody uh, to meet and you can check out a camera. Um, so you have all those options there. Again, if for some reason getting access to um, camera, smartphone, whatever, if that's an issue, just let me know and we will deal with it. Um, okay, so right here I, I have, you must purchase an external hard drive. You don't have to purchase an external hard drive. I highly, highly recommend it. Um, they are not expensive. You could go to Walmart and get one for relatively cheap. Um, some people just house the footage on their laptop or something like that. Um, but a decent external hard drive, make sure that it's XFAT. Um, and if you go there and ask them, just ask if it's XFAT. That means it can be read by both um, Windows operating and Mac. Um, so that, that way, if it's just Mac um, and you go from one computer to uh, one Mac to a Windows, it might not work. In fact, it won't work if that's the case. So you want something that can be read by any kind of computer. Um, you'll be getting, you know, different footage and things like that. And it's good to have everything sort of backed up in one place or another. Um, so be thinking about getting that. I'm going to guess a lot of you probably have an external hard drive of some kind. So um, just be aware of that. If that's something that you're interested in getting, I highly recommend it. Um, and it just, it'll save you heartache. I have seen it where students lose footage. Um, and so if you have it backed up somewhere, that's good. Also, and it depends on what kind of camera you're going to be using, um, is you go out and get a SD card. Um, I have in here 16 gig, um, but you can kind of get um, any size that you want. Um, make sure it's a class 10 SD card. You don't have to, but um, if you're going, they might have some that you could check out at the school. I don't know, they're inexpensive. Again, while you're at Walmart, you can probably um, probably find it. So, um, so that's sort of the main things that I want you to take away from just kind of going over the syllabus. Um, we have grading policies, things like that. Make sure you don't plagiarize, do your own work. Um, and then down here, this is a little subject to change, but this is cause I, I haven't ever taught this one fully online. So 
be prepared for some wiggle room. Um, you'll have kind of your assignments. That's going to be the bulk of uh, your points, as you can see here. Um, film journal. Um, you will be doing watching five films of your choosing throughout the semester. I'll go over it in just a second when we get back here into um, the modules. Um, but you'll be watching, you'll be doing basically a five page paper on films of your choosing. You'll have your final production, which is your film that you'll be doing kind of throughout the semester working on. Um, you'll have an experimental uh, film or music video, one of the two. And then you'll have a short hero goal obstacle video. Um, I'll give you weekly assignments. Generally, they're worth about 10 to 20 points each. Um, so you'll have in the neighborhood of about 25 short assignments throughout the semester. Um, you know, response to a video, response to your reading, um, things of that nature. You'll have um, a midterm film or a midterm exam. It kind of depends on how the semester is going. I don't anticipate it being a very hard assignment either way, um, but I might have you film something short or um, if we're kind of, you know, because we're already a week behind, um, if I don't want to overburn you, it might just be a short um, midterm exam. And this class isn't really about memorization or any of that, so don't anticipate like, you know, a uh, memorize these 50 terms. I'm hoping you take away an understanding of all those 50 terms when the semester is done, but I'm, I'm really not going to make anything overly complex um, for you. I'd rather you focus your energy on producing good content. Um, you can um, expect two edits. One of them is fairly small. One of them is editing a scene just to give you practice. Um, I do want you to, to access Premiere Pro. That's something you're going to have to do at the school. They should have access for all the students. And there's um, editing computers. I'll give you tutorials how to use Premiere Pro. Once you do um, at least one of these edits um, on Premiere Pro, you can use something else. If you have um, Final Cut, Movie Maker, um, some people have InShot on their phone, some people have Premiere Rush. Um, once you're shooting your own stuff, I really don't care what you edit on, but I would like for you to do at least one of the two assigned edits on Premiere Pro, and that way you have a working knowledge of it and can um, start to use it uh, once you get out of college and go get a job. You'll, you'll know the basics of how to use it. That is the syllabus. Again, ask me if you have any questions via email. Um, and then let's go over to the modules. Um, I'm going to see it how you see it. And um, they, Blackboard is super clunky. I like um, to make my uh, area sort of nice and neat. And I don't see ways that you can minimize these um, different segments here. Um, but this is where all the work will be. Um, I will basically be doing it by module number and I'll put the dates of this module encompasses these dates, August 15th through September 2nd. That doesn't always mean due dates or everything will be due within that time, but this is, you know, what you'll be focused on. But let's say down the road, um, I give you that experimental film. You know, th that might be three weeks that that'll be due. So it's important to make sure that you're aware of the due dates of everything. But as far as me putting fresh content and you knowing, okay, this is what I need to go and look at the start of the next week for the lectures, the reading, and um, different assignments. But again, be aware that some of the assignments, it, just because we're up going up to September 2nd doesn't mean that everything's due then. I think in this case it is. Um, I will try and kind of make everything due by that time uh, or that date. And in fact, speaking of time, I, I will kind of be putting everything due Fridays at 8 o'clock or at least um, I'm going to try and be consistent with that just so that there's a recurrent date and time of when you know things need to be in by. Um, so I think all of these assignments so far, um, September 2nd at 8 p.m. at night. Um, and then weekly, I'll, I'll try and post something like this that you can 
work on um, to, or you can watch to see what's going on for the week. So this will give you an idea of if module one, August 15th through September 2nd, um, what you'll be doing for this time. So um, we start with uh, read chapter one and two of the uh, Bare Bones Camera Course. Fairly easy, self-explanatory book again it's it's very easy and then you'll have assignment number one assignment 10 facts from the reading um just in case so here it is number one assignment blah 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 um whenever you're doing anything for me i kind of ho do hold college students to college student standards don't write in text don't um don't avoid checking your grammar or spelling You'll probably be saying that and say, Professor Foss, I see spelling errors from you all the time. I, I do try and <laughs> check those. It'd be good. Um, but, you know, turning in your work, give it a look over. Um, we all make mistakes and, I'm you know, let some things go. But if you have, you know, 10 plus grammar or spelling uh, errors, I really start docking points, especially because these aren't um, that this isn't that weighted. But make it academic. You know, put some put some thought behind what you're saying. So, really easy for this this first one. Um, based on your reading of chapters one and two of the Bare Bones Camera Course, please write ten facts you learned from the reading. Please make your answers thorough and clear. Use academic language. Uh, I need to know you know what you are saying. So, for example, the aperture of a lens is me measured in f-stops and accounts for how much light is let through the lens to the sensor. There you go. That nice neat to the point of what it is so that is assignment one um, these lectures are not posted yet so don't look for them but you'll have um, three lectures they might be posted when you watch this I don't know um, as I'm doing this um, I am just about to record those lectures I need to go get a better microphone um, and I wanted to do that before I did but you'll have um, three little uh, lectures to watch um, and then you'll have two um, assignments two uh, excuse me three more assignments um, assignment number two um, here's a PDF um, this will be kind of fun is to tell a story with pictures not video just pictures um, we'll go through in the camera how different shots angle size things like that make a difference you're gonna take um, 10 pictures that tell a story just by the picture. It goes into detail of what to do. Um, I post examples of how, you know, this picture uh, tells a story just by itself that we can kind of begin to see the language of cinema coming through just in um, a shot and what that can mean. Um, so you will tell a story, a simple hero goal obstacle story and um, use only pictures. Um, again, ask me if you have questions on that. After you watch the lecture on the camera, um, it'll make a little bit uh, more sense. Then you have a lecture on the narrative. We'll get into the nitty gritty of how stories are told and the little, um, uh, the little elements that make up stories, specifically, you know, film, and the classical Hollywood style. So for that assignment, um, I want everybody, if you can, um, to watch the movie Rudy. I have an Amazon link and then I have a link to other streams um, where you can find it. You've probably seen it, um, but basically watch the lecture on the narrative and then you're just gonna answer some questions about uh, the film. So you can copy and paste this into a Word doc if you want, or you can just write your answers um, by here. But once you um, watch the, the narrative lecture, these will kind of make more sense. Some of them are a little bit hard. Looking for effort here, it doesn't have to be perfect. And most importantly, um, this isn't an assignment whether or not you like the movie. I choose this one because the story structure is just perfect for seeing the ebb and flow of story and everything happens at a very precise point it's very um, I don't want to say cookie cutter but it is you can really see um, the examples that we'll talk about you can see um, the structure of the story being told really well 
If there's an issue with getting the film again, let me know. Um, assignment four, how to direct uh, a scene. This is a, this should be fun. Um, this is a, uh, a little YouTube video to watch. Um, and you'll just write a one paragraph response, five sentences. How do blocking and staging affect the outcome of a scene? So what you're gonna see is a director who stages um, a scene to fit, I think it's three or four different examples of how that scene can play out um, in different ways, comedic, drama, uh, and how the, the choices a director make can make a difference. So this is kind of to get you start thinking like a director moving forward. So these uh, are your assignments for the week. This is your film journal. This is not due until I believe December 2nd. You can check it for, let's see if I click on it. Um, yeah, December 2nd, so you have all semester. Now, a couple of things. Uh, you are the first class I've only ever asked for five films. I started out doing 20 films, and then I cut it down to 10, and now I'm cutting it down to five. And the reason I do that is students always put this off. I would say half of students put this off um, until the very end, and then they're trying to basically get through 10 movies right at the end of the semester when you have um, you know, something else going on. So I don't want that to be the case this time. Um, but what you'll do for this assignment, and I will post examples um, on Canvas for you to look at, um, I encourage you to find a group. It doesn't have to be people in class. It would be great if it was. Um, so maybe in discussions I'll put there, people want to get in a group, watch a film, talk about it, um, and see what it's, um, you know, what it's all about. Uh, it makes it the experience, film watching is such a communal thing that I think being with people really helps bring out the meaning in it. Um, but five pages over five films, one page each, um, one page, double space. I don't need your name or any of that at the top where you're trying to like, you know, double space name, double space date, double spaced Mr. Professor Foss, whatever. Just, um, all you need to do is one out of five, two out of five, and the title of the film. And when you look at the examples, you'll see um, what it is. So overspacing to try and get it there, it's not gonna fool me, so don't even try it. The other thing is I don't need a plot summary. Um, so I don't need one page on Forrest Gump is the story of one man's quest for love. The first five minutes are dot, 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 dot. The second five minutes are dot, 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 dot and you're at the, at the end of your one page. All right, so what I'm looking for are um, these two things right here. So I'm looking for the use of the vocabulary from your book or lectures. So um, as we get more into this, you'll start to see like uh, what I mean. So what I would like is for you to bold whatever term it is that you're talking about. So if you say low lighting, the low lighting created a sense of mystery all right so you bold low lighting and then i it gives me a chance to see you know what you're talking about you're taking away um you know a good amount of knowledge of the terms so you make that the first part of one page the second part can be a little bit of a you know what do you think worked what didn't work what did you like what didn't you like so you could get a little subjective with it at that point um so plagiarism, please don't copy and paste anything from online. Um, just don't, you'll get a zero for it and I'll, it makes everybody's life complicated. Um, 8 p.m. December 2nd, no late work since I'm giving you all semester. Um, you know, um, you can get it done. I will accept hour long dramas. Um, or if you, if you have like, I know some people have tried to do like anime um, or like half hour comedy shows. Email me if you have a question about something you could do. I wouldn't say I'll allow like five half hour episodes or something, but maybe one. Like, um, I don't know if you really like, say, Shit's Creek or something. Um, and 
you're looking at it from a very academic perspective, yeah, maybe you can use that and that'd be fine. Um, turn in a PDF of it when you have it done. Let me just see. Um, oh wait, here it is. Here's the example right here. Okay, so this is all I need for it. This is back when they had to do 20 of them a semester. <laughs> um, so just one out of 20 um, and the sixth sense. And you could see in the film, the sixth sense, close-ups allow the audience, blah, 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 blah. So see how they got close-ups, bold, extreme close-ups, bold, point of view shots. Um, that's how you can do it. And you can, again, look at these. And then we got to the next one. Um, they didn't, you know, go crazy and add all these spaces, just keep it nice and organized. High key lighting, low key lighting, natural lighting. So there you go. Um, that's kind of what I um, have for you right now. Um, your lectures will be up uh, soon, so you can kind of start going um, with everything. But yeah, welcome to the class. I think this will be fun. All right, everyone, again, hit me up if you have any questions. Have a good day.